Hello, Miss Lovers. Happy to see you here today. We have a really interesting question, and a lot of students might be saying, Hey, Mister, I can easily solve it like in five seconds, but what about a solution? Because in terms of math, we're interested in a solution, not about inspection method. I know everyone can easily fill this route, everyone can easily find the solution to this challenge, but what about a solution? What about step by step explanation? So, in this video, let's try to solve this challenge algebraically and step by step. First of all, let's bring the 36 from our right side to left side. As a result, what do we have right here? We have x cubed plus x square and minus 36 equal to equal to zero. Right now, instead of this 36, it's really a great thing to write 27 plus 9. Okay, so let's do this right now. As a result, what do we have right here? x cube plus x square. And instead of this 36, we're going to write 27 plus 9. Okay, 27 plus 9. It changed nothing because this is absolutely, absolutely the same value. Right now, let's open parentheses real quick. As a result, we have x cubed plus x square minus 27 and minus 9 equal to equal to 0. Right now, we need to see that 27 is equal to 3 cube. Yeah, we, have, we, can, we can express this as a cube and we can express this 9 as 3 square. It helps us a lot, so let's do this right now. As a result, we have x cubed plus x square minus 3 cube, yeah, and minus 3 square, really great, it changed nothing, but it helps us a lot. Right now we can easily see that we have x cube and we have 3 cube, so we have two expressions with the third power, and we have x square and we have 3 square, so in the same way we have two expressions with the second power. So right now let's try to group this expression, so let's do this right now. As a result, let's first of all let's group our cubes, so x cube minus 3 cube, we have x cube minus 3 cube, yeah, and let's do the same thing with the squared. We have right here addition, so it changed nothing for us. We have plus x square minus 3 square, really great, equal to, equal to 0. So, really great. Right now, we're gonna find a formula. We can remember we need to learn about a school identity, about a school formula, because this is our difference of cubes, this is our difference of squares. So, right now, let's remember this formula. First of all, let's start with this formula, which tells us what is equal difference of squares. So, we have right here a square minus b square, which is equal to a, a plus b, or a minus b doesn't matter, a plus b times a minus b, really great, so this is our formula right here, but this is our cube formula, let's write this formula right here, so as a result we have right here difference of two cubes, a different formula, yeah, we have a cube minus b cube, this is also a product of two parentheses, but completely different product, so we have right here a minus b, and times this parentheses a square plus a b, and plus b b square. Okay, this is our formula. We're going to apply this formula right here, this formula right here. Let's do this right now. As a result, x cubed minus 3 cubed will be equal to x minus 3, and times another parenthesis, x square plus 3x, and plus 3 square equal to 9. Let's write it as 9. Yeah, and plus another formula, difference of squares. So we have right here x, x plus 3 times x minus 3, x plus 3 times x minus 3 x minus 3, which is equal to 0 right now, x minus 3 right here, and we have the same expression right here, x minus 3, we can easily, we can easily factor this expression, let's do this. So we have right here x minus 3, and in another parenthesis, we'll have, what do we have right here, we have this expression and this expression, we will take it in, in another, another parenthesis, so x square plus 3x and plus 9, and plus x and plus 3, plus x and plus 3 equal to 0. Right now, right now let's simplify these expressions. Uh, this we still write it the same, so we have right here x minus 3, and inside this parenthesis we have right here 3x, and to x we have 4x, but in the beginning we have x squared, so x squared plus 4x and plus 12, yeah, plus 4x and plus 12 really great, equal to equal to zero. Right now, a product of two parentheses equal to zero when the first parenthesis equal to zero or the second parenthesis equal to zero. So right now, let's split our, our area by two parts. And first of all, we're going to write that x minus 3 equal to zero. Yeah. And from here, x first equal to 
x first equal to 3. This is like the most popular solution to this challenge. A lot of students solve this challenge by inspection. They say, okay, mister, x equal to 3, this is a very obvious solution, but what about a solution? Uh, uh, root, sorry, yeah? Uh, this is a very obvious root, but what about a solution? As you can see, a long and complicated solution. And a lot of students might be saying, hey, mister, I can easily find this find this root without a solution. But it's really bad thing in terms of math. When you solve the challenge only in, in two lines, it's really bad thing for you and for your teacher to be, to, um, to be fair, because... Yeah, this is very bad, very bad moment when you solve this challenge like that. But as you can see, when you solve this challenge step by step, according to algebra skills, according, according to math properties, as you can see, we have a long and complicated solution. But in the same way, in addition, you will have two complex roots right here, because right here we will have like more roots. It's not like like only one root. We will have over here more two more roots. Let's find it. So we have right here another parenthesis x squared plus 4x and plus 12 equal to equal to zero right now let's find our discriminant right here let's look what will happen right here in this second parenthesis so our discriminant equal to b square minus 4ac b square minus 4ac which is equal to 4 square minus 4 times 1 and times 12 which is equal to we have 16 minus 4 times 12 we have we have 48 yeah we have 48 so as a result our discriminant is negative we have minus minus 32. So it implies that here we will have two complex roots, but when you solve this challenge by inspection, you can't find complex root. This is main trick right here. So when you solve this challenge completely, you can easily say, okay, I solve this challenge completely, I find all these roots right here, so it's it's really great. But when you solve this challenge by inspection, you will solve this challenge only with this with this one root, which is really bad thing in terms of math, because we need to to solve this challenge completely as as, as much as we can. Yeah, we need to find all these roots. So not about this, let's find our complex root. We know discriminant, so x second and third equal to minus b, we have right here minus b, plus minus square root of discriminant, and all over, all over to a, equal to minus b, we have right here minus 4, minus 4, plus minus square root of minus 32, we already know that right here we'll have a complex root, because we can't find square root of a negative value in terms of real numbers, yeah, and all over, all over 2. Right now let's simplify this a little bit. Let's write this 32 as 16 times 2 and let's create this complex unit. So let's write this as a product square root of minus 1 times square root of 16 and times square root of 2. Let's do this. So we have right here minus 4 plus minus. Right here we have square root of 16 times square root of 2 and times square root of minus 1. It helps us to create a complex, complex unit. It is equal to minus 4 plus minus square root of 16 equal to equal to 4 times square root of 2 and times square root of minus 1 equal to equal to i. Really great. And we divide all of the thing by, by 2. And the final step, we can easily divide this numerator by 2. We can easily do this because uh, this is divisible by 2, 4 divided by 2 and 4 divided by 2 right here. So as a result we have minus 2 plus minus 2 square root of 2 times i really great. So right now let's write our final answer to this question. Let's do this. So right now we can easily say that we will we solve this challenge com completely. We solve this challenge completely. We find all of this, all of this root, all of this solution. So let's do this. So we have our answer. x first equal to 3. x second equal to, let's go with the plus sign, minus 2 plus 2 square root of 2i and x third equal to minus 2 minus 2 square root of 2 times i. And the final thing right here, this is real number root, yeah, we can easily check it, and these are complex, complex root, complex roots, yeah, complex roots right here. So one real number, two complex root. Right now we can easily see a plot, you can easily see a graph to this challenge, you can easily see this one point of intersection, so we can easily say that uh, we have only one, only one solution, only one, only one root. Right now let's check this root real quick, so let's do this, let's check it right here on the left side. So let's check it. As I told before, a lot of students can easily solve this challenge by inspection, because it's like very obvious root right here, x cubed plus x squared equal to 36. And when x equal to 3, we have 3 cube plus 3 square equal to 36, which is absolutely correct thing because 27 plus 9 equal to equal to 36. Yeah, this is absolutely correct, but just agree with me when you solve this challenge like that, 
when you write that x equal to 3 when you solve this challenge only in in uh, four lines this is a very bad thing in terms of math for you and for your teacher but when you solve this challenge like that when you find when you factor it when you write your formula when you show to your teacher that you know something when then you read, read, you know something about about math you know these identities you know these formulas yeah this is really great moment for you and for your teacher yeah i hope you understand my thoughts about it because a lot of students solve the challenge by inspection a lot of students solve the challenge like that and this is very bad thing in terms of math you just need to learn two formulas and you just need to learn how can we factor this expression and you will solve this challenge completely then you solve this challenge uh, with a uh, two complex uh, complex solution it is really great moment for you and for your teacher your teacher will be absolutely happy 100 percent when you see this this solution not this inspection method but this this solution i guess this is really great really really great moment so we hope you understand my thoughts about it maybe a little bit long video but i try to um, give you my thoughts my notes about this challenge because i see a lot of students solve this challenge like that and i wanted to share you with this solution with this correct correct solution so we hope you learned something new i hope you understand something new and definitely don't feel bad if you got this wrong i definitely wish you all the best in your mathematic adventure so see you next videos and have a great day